Hey, it's John from Tinderbox Arts. So on my BMW R1200 RT, I'm doing some maintenance today. And one thing I wanted to point out to folks who uh, want to try this is, if you're doing the uh, final drive oil uh, or fluid, and I, I usually do the transmission as well, um, usually you'll grease the splines at the rear of the drive shaft, which has been shown in a, in a uh, different video of mine. But now I want to show you if you want to remove the drive shaft completely, and uh, grease the front splines by the transmission output shaft. Um, I'll show you how to do that. So let me just get you oriented here. Where the screwdriver is sticking in, um, here's the foot peg on the bottom and the brake at the bottom. This is on the right side. And then the screwdriver is sticking in just below, you know, where the uh, fairing here ends. Uh, so this is the transmission right here. And um, the output shaft is right here. Now I'm going to try to get you close in here to show you uh, that's where the universal joint is. There's a rubber boot there. It's really hard to see though, so I'm going to see if I can try to show you. So where the edge of that, uh, or the point of that screwdriver is sticking in there, I'm trying to get the light where it might show. It's really hard to show here. Uh, right about there. You can just see right in there where the universal joint is. So there's a rubber boot right there. I've pulled it back with a screwdriver. And right in there is the universal joint. So that joint is held on with a clip to the output shaft of the transmission. So to undo that, all you got to do is stick a screwdriver in there, like a flat blade screwdriver in there, and just twist the blade. That's enough to just, you know, unclip it. And then you can pull the drive shaft out. All right, I have the drive shaft pulled halfway out, and now I'm going to try to expose. See, oh, God. I hope that's in focus, but I don't think it is actually. Let me see if I can focus this while I'm... So that is the end of the output shaft right there. You can see... Oh God, it's so hard to get a camera in there. There you go. So all I'm going to do is spread a bunch of grease in there from here, you know, using a paintbrush or something like that. And then it is a finesse kind of job. You got to get the drive shaft back on there and you have to push it from the other side or snap it in so that that clip gets to that little area you see there um, to hold the dry shaft in place. So I'm just going to grease this up. I don't think I can show you that on camera. And then I'll give the dry shaft a shove to get it back on there. All right, so before you curse me out uh, about taking the dry shaft out and not being able to get it back in, this is the trick you're going to need uh, to get this dry shaft on the other end lined up. Because what happens is it, it drops down in this housing here and it's hard to get it lined up with the output shaft. So all you got to do is Take a long stick, this is just a long piece of thin wood, slide that in there as far as you can, and then you can use this as a lever to pry up the um, drive shaft to line it up. Now I do this alone with a flashlight on my shoulder. It would be easier with someone else holding a light, but uh, so I did, it took about 30 seconds to get it lined up. And then once you get it lined up, you could take this out, and I just used a, um, a rubber a dead blow hammer not on this part, but on the shoulder of the um, drive shaft itself. It didn't really take that much. But then you want to make sure that it's actually, that the clip is actually engaged. So you should be able to pull it back and forth like this, and it's not going to come out. So that's really all it is. It all in, it took me longer to film it than to actually do it. And then, of course, I'll do the rear um, splines as well, get those greased up, and then you're done.